session, I'll be making progress on the Galaxy tutorial, updating my lab notebook, and using PCR to amplify my target barcoding samples to run on a gel for DNA confirmation. Galaxy is a server where all these analysis tools live and make up Mother. A way to think about Galaxy is like Google Drive for these analysis tools. We'll be using Galaxy to analyze the 16S meta barcoding samples, therefore it's important we know how to navigate the software smoothly beforehand. Throughout the semester, we're keeping an up-to-date digital lab notebook of the work we've been doing in and outside of the lab. Key components of the notebook are to outline the day's goals, protocol, results, and a reflection of the day and to look ahead for the next lab session. Alright, so it's time to head into the lab. First, I labeled two PCR tubes, one for my duck pond target barcoding sample and the other for my Bryn Mawr pond target barcoding sample. With my extracted DNA samples, I put them on ice while preparing the PCR tubes. For PCR, we used special pipette tips that had extra filters to avoid contamination from the pipette to the sample. PCR is very sensitive, so it's important to take precautions when handling the materials and equipment involved. The TA helped us add primers needed. In my case, I had two invertebrates, so I used LCO1490 forward primer and HCO2198 reverse primer. So here's exactly what's in each PCR tube. Note that the microliters of water change depending on how much DNA is added. We used the nano drop to determine our sample's DNA concentration, so now we're able to know how much sample to include, whether to increase or decrease its concentration for PCR. updating lab notebooks and centrifuging the PCR tubes, we briefly set them on ice while programming the PCR machines. Taking a closer look at the PCR process, there are three main stages. Denaturation, where the double-stranded DNA unwinds, annealing, where the primers attach to the template DNA, and extending, where the new strand of DNA is made. These three stages are repeated, doubling the number of DNA copies on each cycle. We were sure to note where we put our PCR tubes in the machine to ensure that we were able to retrieve our samples once the process was complete. So in preparation for a talk during Wednesday's lecture period by Dr. Holly Bick, I read a paper and submitted a question for Dr. Bick to answer live tomorrow. Dr. Bick works with eDNA and deep sea biology work. Her talk was very insightful about her work but also her career path. So for Thursday's session, we ran our PCR product on an agros gel via gel electrophoresis. For our phase one project, this is the point where we're hitting a fork in the road to see whether we're going to proceed with TA cloning or troubleshoot our PCR based on the results we get from today's gel. Rachel and I work together to set up our gel, load our samples, two each, the latter standard and the positive and negative control. Notice here how you can see bubbles forming in the water and that's how we know that the gel has electricity flowing through it at 80 volts. Once that completed after about an hour, we removed the gel and headed over to image it. From our results, we could see a clear ladder standard, positive control, and my Bryn Mawr Pond spider sample. Unfortunately, the other lanes with our samples didn't have any bands, meaning there wasn't DNA present in the sample. So since one of my samples worked, I was able to move on to the TA cloning step where I added a mixture of PCR water, ligase buffer, vector, and ligase to 0.4 microliters of my PCR sample to put in the PCR machine for cloning. Though a lot of the samples didn't work, there was still a good number for my section that did and moved to the cloning step.